They told us mass immigration made Canada richer. But behind the curtain, this grand experiment plays roulette with our economy and quality of life. We believe the promises. Newcomers filled labor shortages. Population growth drives GDP higher. And diversity makes Canada stronger. On the surface, the immigration Ponzi scheme seemed to benefit everyone as house prices and consumption soared decade after decade. Except now, the music is stopping. The unsustainable math is collapsing in plain sight. This is the Canadian dream unraveling for millions. The glass tower of costs and debts rising faster than incomes can sustain. Eventually, something has to break. And the fissures now crack wide open from sea to sea to sea. Stay with me as we expose the ugly truth. Canada's economy is being actively destroyed by deceptive immigration policies. But before we begin, we would like you to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and hit the notification bell icon so you do not miss out on amazing and entertaining content. So, let's begin without any further ado. Let's dive into the data showing Canada's unprecedented population explosion. Back in the mid-1980s, when mullets and neon spandex were in fashion, Canada housed just 25.5 million residents in total. But flash forward to today in 2023, and we've sailed past a staggering 40 million people. Wait, it gets more mind-blowing. Experts predict Canada's population could reach over 50 million by 2040. Where did all these new Canadians come from seemingly overnight? The culprit is record-breaking immigration inflows year after year after year. Canada accepted over 492,984 immigrants in 2022 alone. That means Canada added the equivalent of three more cities the size of Vancouver in just two years via immigration. Let's discuss Canada's geography for a second. As the world's second largest country, you'd assume Canada has unlimited capacity to handle a swelling population. Here's the catch. This epic influx of new Canadians is contributing to several intersecting crises simultaneously, including housing supply shortages, healthcare system breakdowns, infrastructure overcapacity, and declining wages compared to America. Basically, Canada's vital systems and safeguards are buckling under the brute force of unprecedented population growth, and record-setting immigration numbers year after year function as the fuel, pouring gasoline on multiple inflammatory fires. Urban planners confirmed Canada's key infrastructure was designed for much lower population levels and slower growth rates. Attempting to accommodate this flood of new permanent residents all at once places severe strain. Let's analyze the housing disaster first since shelter is a basic human necessity. The numbers paint an alarming picture of Canada's housing construction shortfall. Canada built around 250,000 new homes in 2022 to be exact. But, as we just discussed, the country simultaneously welcomed over 400,000 immigrants plus international students. That's importing half a Nova Scotia population worth of extra people in one year. Again, you don't need an economics degree to understand the nightmarish imbalance between demand and supply. This extreme housing shortage has caused average Canadian home prices to double from $413,000 in 2015 to over $811,700 in 2021, gains of over 97% in just seven years. In the white-hot markets of Toronto and Vancouver, benchmark detached houses now hover near a cool $1.7 million. We're talking average homes, not mansions. Prices have more than tripled within 15 years, fueling one of the world's biggest property bubbles. These out-of-reach price tags, coupled with spiking mortgage rates, have slammed demand. Builders anticipate erecting 200,000 homes at most in 2023. But immigration could again top 400,000 new residents needing places to live. See why economists warn this mismatch is the number one threat to Canada's economy? The fallout is already visible with homeless encampments mushrooming from Victoria to Ottawa to Halifax. Even smaller towns are witnessing rising homelessness for the first time ever. And parks across Toronto and Vancouver transform into tent cities every night, despite having public bathrooms and play structures just steps away. 
Demand is so feverish that even dual-income middle-class families with decent salaries no longer qualify for mortgages sufficient to buy real estate within Canada's sought-after metro regions. We're talking households pulling in $100,000 plus. Yet in the face of this intensifying housing crisis, municipal councils cling to restrictive laws that constrain builders. Urban planners oppose expanding suburbs. Instead, they enforce height restrictions, minimum parking requirements, green belts, and preserving neighborhood aesthetics. This nimbyism blocks developers at every turn through barriers called zoning bylaws and red tape. Urban analysts agree, unless Canada stops growing by over 400,000 additional people each year without a matching increase in housing supply, the real estate crisis threatens to spiral beyond any possibility of control. Sustaining population booms require infrastructure booms. If immigration intake exceeds housing construction for long enough, Canada risks a socioeconomic breaking point. So why can't we rapidly scale home building to parallel immigrant worker needs? Systemic health care crises reveal even deeper root causes. Just as Canada fails to build adequate housing, the country also grapples with expanding health care coverage for all these new residents. The system was already pushed to its limits handling COVID. Many burnt-out staff quit the demanding profession during the pandemic. But get this, professional medical associations intentionally cap residency training positions for nurses and doctors across Canada. Essentially, the country makes it impossible for many qualified international physicians and nurses to practice medicine domestically even if they eagerly wish to serve our communities. So, while Canada welcomes over 400,000 newcomers annually, the country outright blocks their healthcare credentials and skills from being deployed to strengthen our understaffed hospitals. It's totally counterintuitive and counterproductive. The frustrating end results? Predictable but tragic. ER closures are becoming routine. Delayed life-saving cancer surgeries push mortality rates higher than peer nations healthcare staff shortages leave every hospital over capacity, warning lights blinking. The experts agree Canada's once stellar Medicare system for all residents is actively being dismantled through internal sabotage. Without rapidly expanding medical school seats for Canadians and harnessing immigrant healthcare capabilities, the country's physical facilities and staffing levels face systemic breakdowns. How overstressed is Canada's healthcare system? Even before COVID, Canada ranked low for hospital beds per 1,000 population among OECD countries. Today, bed occupancy frequently exceeds 100% with patients lined up in hallways and supply closets. And that's just hospitals. Over half of Canadians lack a primary care physician or clinic. Without investments in new wings and medical training programs, experts warn Canada's healthcare infrastructure will suffer third world style failures. What makes this worse is swelling population growth drives Medicare costs higher, but outdated doctor certification rules prevent adding capacity to meet demand. It's a contradiction pushing Canada's healthcare system nearer to catastrophic collapse, according to the Canadian Medical Association and provincial health authorities. If Canada's strained healthcare and unaffordable housing have you wondering why politicians actively accelerate immigration beyond domestic infrastructure limits in the first place, you're on to something. Driving these controversial mass migration initiatives is an obscure think tank called the Century Initiative, founded for the express purpose of dramatically swelling Canada's population as rapidly as possible from 40 million towards over 100 million by 2100. This shadowy organization is bankrolled by wealthy corporate elites, including major banks, fossil fuel companies, and real estate investors. They stand to gain handsomely from surging property valuations, housing shortfalls, and depressed local wages that boost profit margins. Upon closer scrutiny, the Century Initiative Committee consists predominantly of millionaire business leaders, bankers, and former political dignitaries. Essentially, Canada's most affluent 1%, who will never bear the consequences of overcrowded cities, strained hospitals, inflated real estate, or decaying infrastructure. By aggressively lobbying all levels of government to ratchet record immigration beyond domestic housing development or healthcare capabilities, the Century Initiative's corporate sponsors maximize shareholder returns. Stacking millions more future taxpayers atop Canada's population pyramid, 
generates lucrative tax revenue to fund the ballooning retirement benefits of these very same ultra-wealthy Canadians without personally jeopardizing their own lavish lifestyles. However, what the Century Initiative downplays is the very real climate change impacts. Experts warn Canada is on course to surpass multiple ecological and societal tipping points as infrastructure buckles under breakneck population growth. Urban planners emphasize Canada's immigration numbers as a percentage of total population represent unprecedented ratios exceeding anything in modern history. For perspective, Canada currently accepts over 0.9% of its population in newcomers every single year, three times higher than the US and five times higher than the UK. At this pace, Canada's population could realistically triple from 40 million today to over 120 million by 2100. Domestic housing construction, healthcare capacity, public transit, roads, water systems, and sewers are already cracking under the sheer pressure of attempting to accommodate the recent tidal wave of new permanent residents settling here faster than the infrastructure can expand. Canada has added a St. John's worth of people every single quarter for the last three years. Yet politicians led by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau continue accelerating immigration rates to new dizzying heights, easily the highest per capita inflows globally. Their collective government overreach demonstrates no willingness to even study what societal thresholds represent sustainable population targets before an irreversible cultural meltdown threatens Canada as we know it. Critics caution Canada's breakneck population surge via perpetual record immigration appears disastrously on course to overshoot carrying capacity absent urgent reforms. At some stage, the Ponzi scheme relying on endless population growth to bail out unaffordable expansions of government services will implode our economy and public budget. In especially dire scenarios, if Canada continues border policies effectively adding a city the scale of Brampton annually, analysts project harrowing societal and ecological consequences. Real estate crises forcing residents to abandon unlivable metro regions as the average home price exceeds $2 million virtually everywhere within 100 kilometers of a major city. Healthcare and education rationing that literally threatens Canadian patient health and welfare when hospitals and schools can no longer expand. Surgeries already face two plus years delays even for serious cancers and heart defects. Total erosion of entry level and temporary youth employment crucial for workforce integration as businesses come to rely exclusively on perpetual new waves of global migrant labor. Wage suppression would accelerate rapidly. Environmentally unsustainable climate change impacts bound to accelerate as high density cities plow over green space while congestion, sprawl and consumption grow exponentially alongside 500k additional residents yearly. In effect, Canada seems on track to add the equivalent population of Vancouver to Toronto corridor each single year moving forward. How can any modern society realistically integrate and accommodate over half a million more people annually in perpetuity without profound breakdowns? The overarching existential concern becomes what maximum carrying threshold can Canada's ecofabric sustain before cascading system failures within the climate, food systems, healthcare, and beyond? With no checks on exponential population multiplication, Canada appears to be tempting fate through runaway immigration numbers swelling towards dangerous thresholds unseen since the baby boom era. Except this wave shows no signs of cresting any time within our lifetimes. As we've explored in depth, Canada stands at a critical crossroads. The country's political establishment has tied endless population and economic expansion together as their paramount policy priority over recent decades. However, the supporting ecosystem of housing construction, healthcare capacity, infrastructure development, and environmental protections are revealing escalating signs of strain attempting to sustain this pace moving forward. Critics caution Canada's breakneck population surge fueled by perpetual record immigration inflows is disastrously on course to overshoot carrying capacity absent urgent reforms. At some stage, the Ponzi scheme relying on endless population multiplication to bail out unaffordable expansions of government services will implode our economy and public budget. Make no mistake, 
Without course correction, the litany of unintended consequences stemming from runaway immigration numbers threatens to overwhelm Canada from coast to coast. The overarching existential concern becomes what maximum population threshold can Canada's interconnected web of climate, healthcare, financial, and cultural systems realistically sustain before reaching simultaneous breaking points? Canada is again the world's fastest growing major country, yet complacent policymakers display no motivation to intervene. The window is closing fast for Canada to gracefully stabilize population levels and infrastructure carrying capacities before a spectrum of systemic crises overwhelm households from coast to coast. Bold reforms today could steer Canada clear of disastrous overshoot tomorrow. But politicians must first acknowledge the gathering storm clouds. The time for evidence-based action is now while Canada still controls her own destiny. In the post-truth era, facts matter more than ever. The data warns we are reaching the tipping point as a nation. The future rises or falls on what we choose today. Do you think Canada should decelerate record immigration inflows until housing stocks and healthcare capacity catch up? Or continue accelerating population multiplication, betting future generations will sort out ballooning debts before systems crater? Share your personal stories in the comments below. How are you surviving in this crisis? Click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell to never miss out on our latest videos.